The island of Sodor is full of people and businesses, and when there's people and businesses, there's need for transportation. The island's main mode of transportation is its railways, with engines of all sorts pulling passengers and goods trains all over the island, and directly to Bower and Furness in England and beyond. But the railways aren't the only mode of transportation. There are docks where visitors and goods come from far and wide. The same can be said for the airport and the airfields. But before all that, the only and original mode of transportation was the roads. But most of the businesses needed a more efficient mode of transportation. And because of that, demand for the railways have flourished there. Most of the residents and road vehicles like the railways. All except two. A double-decker bus named Bulgy and a grumpy steamroller named George. For purposes of this story, we'll be focusing on George. He is a bad-tempered steamroller who hates the railway and would like nothing but to see it replaced with roads. One day, Edward was pulling passengers on his branch line. He was just approaching the junction when he noticed something on the level crossing. Driver, brakes! Edward's driver braked, and the blue engine stopped just in time. There on the crossing was none other than George. Watch where you're going, old iron, growled George. Edward groaned. <sighs> George, what are you doing? You know it's dangerous to be standing on a railway crossing. Sorry, but I don't think you're aware that you are early. Rubbish, said Edward's driver, but before he could say anything else, the signalman came out. Um, driver, sir, um, I can confirm that the three of you are early and are not supposed to be coming here for another five minutes. Edward gasped. Oh, well, um, s sorry, George, said Edward. George groaned. George, said the steamroller driver. What? Ugh, fine. Sorry as well, said a reluctant George, and he rolled away. Soon, the line was clear, and Edward puffed away. Told you that we're early, but no one listens to old Johnny. Later that day, Edward returned to Wellsworth Station, where Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for him. Um, sir, if this is about the crossing, I I'm sorry, we, we did not realize that we left early, and, and don't worry, Edward. It was neither you nor George's fault. Edward was relieved. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here because I've got a new assignment for you. What is it, sir? Asked Edward. Well, with Hank out of action, we need another engine to handle the work at the construction yard. And you want me to help with construction trains until Hank has returned? Asked Edward nervously. It will only be for a short time. Until I can find another engine to handle the workload. Or until Hank is repaired. Whichever comes first says Topham Hatt. But sir, who will be handling my usual work? Don't worry. As usual, Donald or Douglas will be coming to help while you're away. Edward was relieved, but he was worried as he was an old engine and was not sure he could handle a heavy work demand at a construction yard. When Edward arrived, Miss Jenny was waiting for him. Ah, Edward, there you are. I need you to go to the cement works to collect some trucks full of cement, since I can't trust either Max nor Monty or the drivers to get it themselves. Um, okay, ma'am, said Edward. As Edward rolled down the line towards the cement works, he heard a whistle. Oh, no, sighed Edward. It was George. He was puffing slowly down the road. Edward looked away, 
but that was not enough to stop George from making rude remarks about him. Hello, old iron. Edward took no notice. This made George cross. You're just useless old tin kettle. Edward didn't hear him. Down with railways! He cried. Soon, Edward arrived at the cement works. Fergus had just finished hunting his train. Alright, Edward. Your trucks are all ready. Good. Soon, Edward was coupled to the train. But before he could set off, Fergus's driver spoke up. The three of you better be careful. These trucks have been nothing but troublesome all day and were a nightmare to shunt into place. Don't worry. Old Eddie here knows how to handle trucks. As soon as he said that, the guard blew his whistle and Edward puffed away. The fireman was right. Edward did know how to handle trucks, but what he didn't know was that these trucks were brand new to Sodor and were not aware that trucks do not play tricks on Edward. As Edward puffed down the line, the trucks were starting to whisper and Edward overheard them. Hey, what's going on back there? The trucks went silent immediately. Hmm, now that's more like it. All went well until they approached East Snapford. Now, said the trucks. They let their brakes slip on and they biffed and bashed into the back of Edward. Hey, stop that, ordered the driver, but the trucks just laughed. Right, that's it. With that, Edward gave the train an almighty bump, and that seemed to make the trucks behave. Ha! Huh. That's how it's done, said Edward. The driver just rolled his eyes. What they didn't know was that some of the cement had fallen out of the trucks and Edward's tender was slightly leaking water. Later, George arrived at the crossing. He was going to help with the construction as Buster was away being overhauled. He was so busy grumbling that he didn't see the wet cement and rolled right over it. Sue the old rails. Damaging my metal rollers. Oh, do please stop, George. Your wheels, as you have stated, are made of metal. We've gone over many crossings, and your wheels are still in good condition. George just groaned and continued to grumble. What neither George or his driver knew was that the cement had gotten in between the rails and the tarmac and the baking sun was starting to dry it. By the time the steamroller arrived at the site, the cement had already dried up. At the same time as George arrived at the construction site, Edward arrived. Hello, George. I see you again, said Edward. <coughs> Huh? Oh, um, <sighs> hello again, Edward, replied George reluctantly. Just then, Miss Jenny arrived. Now, George, I hope that you and your driver are aware of the incident from a few days ago. Both George and his driver said yes. Good. Now, I don't want any mischief or there will be severe consequences, she said. Yes, ma'am. Of course, ma'am, the two replied. Miss Jenny smiled, but then there was soon trouble. No one knew that the cement at the crossing had dried. Just then, the station master heard a whistle. Oh, it's Alice. She's right on time. He was right. It was Alice. She was pulling the loco. She didn't see the cement on the road until it was too late. Driver, brakes! Alice's driver shut off steam and braked hard as well as the guard, but it was too late. Back at the station, the stage master heard a crashing sound. What was that? asked the passenger. The stage master gulped. I hope it's not what I think it is, he said. 
as he telephoned for help, and soon the breakdown train was on its way. Oh my goodness, said the driver. Alice had hit the cement and derailed. Luckily, she wasn't going so fast, so no one was seriously hurt. Are you alright, Alice? I think so. Just get me back on the rails. Soon, Alice was placed on a flat truck. She had just been lowered when Sir Topham had arrived. Alice, are you okay? Yes, my crew is fine. They're over there. I see. Well, take Alice to the steamworks immediately, please. Once she's there, you can start doing her work until she's repaired. Yes, sir, said the little red engine. He was soon coupled to the flatbed, the guard blew his whistle, and he puffed away. No sooner had he gone, Harvey arrived to help clean up the mess. Um, sir, I think you may want to see something. What is it? asked the top of hat. The workman was gesturing to the rails on the crossing. Hmm, interesting, he said. Meanwhile, Edward was preparing to leave for Walsworth. Right, time to be going home, said Edward. He was just about to back down onto the empty truck to take back when George arrived. Hey! Watch where you're going, said George. Sorry, didn't see you there, said Edward. George scoffed. Huh, of course you didn't see me with a big huge tender of yours, said George. This is why roads are better. Edward just sighed. He was soon coupled to the train, and was waiting for the guard to blow his whistle, but the guard didn't do it. What's the hold up? Sorry guys, but the line is blocked. You'll have to stay here until it's cleared. Edward sighed, but George just laughed. Ha ha ha! You see, roads are better than rails. Now, if you excuse me, I better get going home, chuckled George. But before he could leave, Miss Jenny came to see him. Wait, George, wait! What is it? groaned George. First, the main road is blocked. And second, Sir Topham Hatt is coming to see you. George and his driver were surprised, but they soon found out. Sir Topham Hatt pulled up in Winston. Is there something wrong, sir? asked George. Yes, George. Did you cross over the crossing near East Natford? Yes. Intriguing. Edward, did you pass through that area? Asked Topham Hatt. Yes, sir, said Edward. Did anything happen when you went over the crossing? Well, sir, the trucks are being unusually troublesome, like letting the brakes slip on and bumping into me. Interesting. What are you getting at, sir? Sir Topham Hatt explained. There was an accident at the crossing, and we've discovered some dry cement between the rails and the tarmac. Edward was surprised, but before he could say anything else, his fireman spoke up. Edward, your tender is nearly out of water. Edward was surprised. Huh? How did that happen? It looks like some of your pipes are rusting, said the driver. I see. George. Did your driver see anything odd as you went over the crossing? No, said George, but his driver thought otherwise. Well, I think I might have seen something, said George's driver. Everyone was surprised. Well, what did you see? Well, we were driving down the road, and George was complaining, as usual. We were approaching the crossing, I noticed something on the road. I was about to tell George, but by the time I was going to tell him, we were already on the crossing, and he, of course, was complaining. So I decided just to get us to the site. I see, said Topham Hat. 
Everyone looked at George. George, it seems to me that the accident was unintentional for once. But you have caused severe confusion and delay. I will be having a word with your manager. What about Edward? asked George. Well, I will be having a talk with the shunters about brakes. With that, Sir Topham had left. But George was cross. It had been the second time that he had been blamed for something involving the railway that week. So now he knew he was in trouble now. He left off saying, Railways are no good, pull them up, turn them into roads. Railways are no good, pull them up, turn them into roads, he said. Edward felt sorry for George, but he also felt he had a severe impact on the accident. Later that night, George was in his shed. It was near the railway line. He was grumpier than ever. <sighs> well, I've done it now, he sighed. He had been punished by his owner and was now relegated to the shed. All he could do now was watch the trains go by. Well, I guess I could do what those enthusiasts do. What is train spot? Since I've got nothing to do, he said. He watched a few trains go by. This is nice. Nice night, few trains, no one to bother you. He had not even finished the sentence when a horn sounded. Oh great, another engine. But this time, it seemed to be slowing down. It was diesel and bulgy. Hello, old friend. Hello, Bulgy. What do you want now? What is Diesel doing with you? Let's just say I can help you. Help me? Help us, corrected Bulgy. Help us with what? I get the idea that you are keen on the railways on this island. Yeah, but what's it to you? You're a railway engine. Well, yes, but it seems we share a common dislike for the steam engines. Indeed, said Diesel's driver. I call that anti rail league for when me and our friend arrived. Yes, I recall seeing what was left of those signs when it passed by him at the bridge all those years ago. Bulgy groaned. So, what do you want me to do? Well, let's just say we can help you bring this island into the modern age, and you can help us in return. Oh, we'll tell you the details later, but join us if you want to be. Really useful, George thought for a moment. Well, what about my driver? He didn't seem all that interested. So, will you help us? Well, okay, good. We'll meet later and explain the details from the boss. Boss? Yes, boss. As stated, we'll explain the details later, said Bulgy. With that, they left. But George was worried of what was going to happen, but he was also excited. Well, if this sticks it to the railways on Sodor, then so be it. With that, he went to sleep. But little did he know, someone had heard everything. Did you hear that? Yes. Should we tell Stop and Hats? Well, at the very least, tell Bash, said Dash. With that, he puffed away back to Misty Island. <laughs>